ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Is that your ding. panic button? Yes. I just called the cops with that oh button. My God. Welcome back to the Jen Jillian Podcast, where I just hit the button at the bottom of the desk because I think there is an emergency happening. No, there isn't. That's not funny. It's not That's working. not funny. It's not working. Stop. There's no button. There's no emergency. <laughs> Stop. There is an emergency. Me and these is offering you guys twenty no! percent off your first pair <laughs> if you use meundies.com slash Jen and Julian or click the link in the too much video already. description. Guys, you've heard me talk about meundies. All right, the sustainably sourced ultra soft underwear that'll change your life. Get some today, twenty percent off using our discount code. <laughs> also, guys, the skin. <laughs> Why skin. did you look at me like that? Out of one eye, I the swear. Skin. Only one eye looked at me. How did you do that? You're like a newt. How did you do that with your eyes? I'm taking newt training classes. I'm trying to have my eyes be independent of each other. So that one can be reading the skim while the other one's uh, eating breakfast. Guys, the skim skim is an email newsletter. Okay. It's... (laughs) It, it, it condenses all the top stories and sends it right to your email uh, every morning with all like all the stuff you need to know. So you have the stuff in your email to be informed in a condensed, readable fashion. It's not cluttered. It's not on the internet. It's not questionable. It's all the facts. All you need to know right there. What's happening in the world right now is completely free. Just go to this skim. That's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M dot com slash Jenna Julian. Uh, and you can enter for... Uh, a chance to win a $250 Visa gift card. That's also free, entering for a chance to win that. But it's literally just a newsletter you subscribe. doesn't cost a thing. So check it out or click the link. Thank you, sponsors. <laughs> just stop looking at me like that. I'm, I'm not... shifty. <laughs> stop. I'm not... I'm okay. <laughs> stop. Well... I feel like we're completely exhausted, which is why it's like the more tired we are, like the goofier this gets. Don't. It's not a panic button. It's the bottom of the table. Stop I doing find that. It. That was a shocker. <laughs> oh, okay. I just, I'm like so tired. Like everything is so bright right now. I'm like are you guys just want to go us? to sleep. Are you guys sick of us t- telling you how tired we are yet? I'm just sleepy. I want to take a nap. You know? We tired. Um, I hate this, but we're doing it for a specific reason that we're not telling you what's going on. We're just tired with all the shit that's going on right now. You guys will know everything soon. It's not a big deal. But, uh, yeah, we it's been uh, pretty exhausting. Our, our work schedule has been extra difficult lately. Yeah, my mom was just here. The machine was in town, which was fun, but uh, hosting is hosting, right? So it's like, you know. It was Mother's Day. Yeah, it was Mother's Day, and we uh, – Per tradition, we all came over to our house. Yep. Ate some food, relaxed. Yep. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you guys had a wonderful Mother's Day um, yesterday for you. And um, ate some chocolate and hunted for some egg. Nope. That's That's Easter. Easter. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you could have done that too. Happy Mother's Day, and then you throw her an Easter party. Hey, an Easter party is better than no party. You know who said that? The Easter Bunny, who was also a mother, who didn't get anything for Mother's Day, but got all of her presents on Easter. And then said, hey, I'm also a mother. (laughs) I'm a mother first, and the Easter Bunny second. Stop looking at me like that. I thought it would be a fun idea. You guys are always... I I mean, Jenna did this when I was... uh, Unable to be on the podcast. She did sort of an advice podcast where you guys would ask her. Well, that was part of it. You did a lot of things. You're a man, uh, a man of who wears many hats. Did you just intentionally misgender me on you're purpose? A fu- you're a funny guy. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but I thought you guys have tweeted us, you know, questions uh, that we can give you advice on life things uh, every week. I would say anytime we ask for suggestions, that's probably one of the top ones is you guys asking. Yeah, you guys always want advice as if we're in any position to give anybody advice. I don't I, know, man. I'm, I'm, I don't know life any better than anybody else. No, you don't. <laughs> I really don't. Um, there are a few of these. I screenshotted a bunch of them. Um, but there are a few of them that I think we can give you at least sort of our experience uh, 
it's all anecdotal, right? Like we're not experts. Nobody is. We just, we just live our life. So we'll give you our, our advice on some of these things and maybe I'll give you some bad advice because I think you guys were looking for some bad advice too. I'm never looking for bad advice. I am capable of delivering the content in the form of bad advice. So let me know. I don't want any bad advice. You're going to need to get that checked out. What? My foot? Yeah. It's called the foot. Julian is attached to my leg. I don't need to get it checked I, out. I got a guy at Sports Chalet. He'll fit Sports you right Sports Chalet in. is closed down. There exactly. is no more Sports Chalet. What do you think it's been a front for all these years? Fixing, a guy? Fixing toes. What's wrong with my toes? It's beautiful, but I can get, I can get you a guy to look at it. You don't want to check that Stop. out. Stop. They're fine. They're toes. Don't wake me and look away. Uh, let's get started. Oh, no. It's going to be one of these, isn't it? I don't know what you are talking about. I already about. feel like hot and not ready. I wish you guys would calm down over there. <laughs> we have one person. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's just a lot. I thought it was multiple people. It felt like an angry mob. <laughs> I, I now realize it's just you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? How to get into a re- – okay. Uh, Krista, Dink Krista asked how to get into a regular workout routine. Just uh, <laughs> just start running and don't stop. Um, no. You'll get where you need to go. Julian. You'll burn all the calories. Um, at every corner of the streets, there will be someone handing out cups of Pedialyte. Depending on the neighborhood you run in, that changes the flavor of Pedialyte. <laughs> some some pe- honestly, some neighborhoods are really shitty because they water down their their Pedia, and then others are uh, they give bigger cups. Did you just tell her to, that? Just start running. The way, just literally start running, the and way, then it'll figure itself the out. The way to get into regular exercise is to just start running out of pure necessity and survival. Yes, as if you were being che- chased. Okay. Ch- chased. Yeah. Cool. Okay. No. Uh, for serious, um, I feel like I could speak to this a little bit. Go for it. Um. First of all. I don't know. So every – working out for every person – your feet are on my lap. It feels good. It's why I want them. What was that noise? Is that her dog? Guys, are you okay? What's going on over there? It sounded like a moan. Yeah, what the heck, dude? Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, working out is different for everyone, right? So like some people have uh, a background in sports. Some people have a background in – um not sports and just kind of normal athletic training as a person at the gym who runs on the treadmill, lifts their weights and found their routine, however they found it. And I don't, I I definitely don't believe there's one routine or one type of routine that works for everyone. Like, like a workout routine is a very customized thing. It's very personal. Um, so I think it comes down to like two parts for me. One is finding a routine that works for you in terms of like the style of working out. Like, you is have it lifting, to like it. You have to like it. Is it lifting weights? Is it Pilates? Is it yoga? Is it a sport? Is it jujitsu? Is it volleyball? Is it softball? You know what I mean? You find out a workout routine that you enjoy, but it also pushes you. And, you know, those two things kind of come hand in hand to make it the routine that you like in terms of the style of working out. And once you've found that, and you, you don't ever have to feel like you've nailed that down because that changes. Like mm-hmm. as people change and grow, you change and your interests change. So whatever for the time being, that is your interest. I would, I would chase that as your workout routine and then just find a way to not make it monotonous, right? There's ways to have, you know, you split, you split your workout schedule so you're not doing the same thing every day or every week. You can kind of make it a big one, two, three, four week split so that each week is different from the next. And then you start the cycle over and maybe you can modify it the next time or something like that. Um, if you're looking for traditional weightlifting or traditional like basic gym stuff to do, there's plenty of information out there uh, for like basic workouts and stuff. And, and even people who will write you workouts on a customized basis, there's like online coaching that really isn't crazy expensive. There are options out there that help you kind of formulate your own workout plan. But I definitely think the first part is the most important where you find what you're interested in and something that's sustainable and, and you know, it's doable. There's just a place near you to do it or whatever. Even more beginner than that, though, like if you're someone that's never worked out, like you're the, you've are you never been to a gym, you've never had a gym membership or you don't play tennis or, you know, a sport where there's other people, pick 
10 minutes or 20 minutes, something small during the day and pick a schedule for that. Like give yourself maybe a couple days of rest to begin with or three days, you know, whatever it is, but make an actual schedule. And for those 10 minutes, just try and break a sweat however you can. Maybe that's going for a walk one day or doing a hundred sit-ups one day or whatever. Like, I feel like it's just creating the habit before even finding something that you're like, I love this and I want to do this and this makes me happy. Good, yeah. Because for a lot of people like me, like I like lifting weights, but that's about it. Like I like softball, but I don't really want to play in a co-ed league as a form of exercise. It's just not enough for me. You know what I mean? Like there's just not enough softball games. It takes up a little bit too much time and energy. I feel like it's not that realistic, but like, I like walking, but I, I'm not a yoga person. I'm not like a Pilates person. It might take you a long time to figure out what you like. So in the meantime, give yourself a schedule and make them small amounts of time and don't give yourself excuses to skip that. Like, obviously there are nece like necessary things in life when you can't do it. But even if you're traveling or, you know, you had a really long day, you're feeling a little sick, like you can do something, even if it's stretching that day or something like that to get you in the habit of doing it on a daily basis. Great you know? points. Yeah, I totally agree. And also I think something really important too is figuring out what time of day you like to work out at. Because when I was younger, like in college, if I had the choice to do it at 5 a.m., it would always get done at 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. But, like, now that I'm older, I'm like, let's work out in the mid-afternoon, beach. <laughs> we work out at the laziest hour. Well, um, I feel like that could change in life. It, it but, like, right totally now. It totally does change every single year. We have the year. luxury of yeah. being like, okay, it's 4 p.m. Let's go work yeah, out. Yeah, like, a couple years ago, it didn't work for either of us. Absolutely not. Um, great points. I also forgot one thing that I think is super important, that when you find something that you like as a, as a fitness regimen – Keep notes, uh, dedicate a little book, get a little mini notebook and just write notes, whether it's you're logging all of your workouts or just different things that are working and that things that aren't, or just, just write down your experience. Like for me, that is one of the most helpful things in being an athletic person is keeping logs of things. And I'm not talking about. That doesn't help me at well, all. Well, this is a personal thing. I mean this, and I'm not talking about like being like crazy, you know, religiously writing down everything that I do. Cause that's, I feel like that's a little much, but some of my, I've kept like most of my old notebooks and little workout notebooks from high school, college, whatever. And I have them still, and I can see the workouts I was doing. And it's something is really cool about that. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like a cool way to like log and remember your progress and how you, you wrote down your workouts and jujitsu is even more important. You write down different notes. There are things that are helping you and things like that. I just think having a little notebook, a little fitness notebook is a good thing to have. No matter how often you write in it, just having it as an option yeah. to kind of keep you keep. My you last thing, I don't know if I said this because I just forgot because yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. But like something I always remind people when they ask me stuff like that is exercise is free. Exercise it's is literally free. Literally free is free is free is free is free is free. If you want to pay money for it in some way, shape, or form, you absolutely can. But moving your body is free and there's plenty of like – you can just look up shit on Instagram for, for workouts you can do so in a tiny true. room. You can do yoga in a tiny room. You could do it, like anything that you want in a tiny room. Yeah. But moving your body is free. Mm -hmm. And so don't ever let let that stop you from accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Good point. I Next mean, I, I don't think you could become a, a professional um, power lifter without weights, but, you know, you could certainly keep your body and mind in shape. I don't think Jane Krista was looking into being a professional power lifter, but if she was, Maybe. then there's options for if that. She, if you are, forgive me, because um, you will you will probably need some weights for that. Maybe, maybe not. What if the guy just like won powerlifting competitions just from doing push-ups? Holly, Dink Holly. It's like a team. Like you guys all have Dink before your name. Dink Holly on Twitter. How to transition into supporting yourself and no longer relying on parents. Mm, Good mine question. Was, mine was pretty fast and not a choice. Yeah, so like go ahead. Well, mine was like by the time we're done, you know, in high school, we don't live there. Like there were a couple of summers high or some yeah, high school. You don't live at high school? No, after high school. Oh, that sentence is confusing. Sorry. No, after high school. Like once I'm off to college, like there were a couple summers when I was still working at a day camp in mm -hmm. Rochester. But after that, it was like, get the fuck out. And then after college, it was super like, don't call me. There is no help here. Like unless a disaster happened, like you're on your own. 
I think if that if that is the precedent that someone has set for you, like about as a parent, then it's easy because you just I think I, I was going to say out. the same thing. I think it's easy because there's not really an option. I think the right. hard the hard answer is like when it's an option to stay at home. How do you get out? Mm. Right. I could speak to that a little bit. I guess okay. I don't know. I mean. I just think that there comes a point in your life where you may not know exactly what you want to do, um, like as, as a career or with your life or even as hobbies. Like you may just kind of be floating, whether you finish school or you're in school or whatever. Um, but there comes a point when you reach like, you know, 18 or early 20s or whatever, um, where you're like, okay, there's a choice to make here. Like I can spend my time doing something that's that's easy and maybe available to me, like staying at a parent's house or, or you know, whatever. Or you can maybe step a little bit outside the, the box of comfort. You can get a job um, that – multiple jobs or jobs that require you to be, like, in the workplace. You could get your own small apartment in a less than convenient location, get a roommate, find someone on Craigslist, me, whatever. Me, me, all me. And all of that sound – most most likely less less appealing than staying at home, but I think that choice is a really important one because even though it's not as convenient or easy, uh, that is the step that you take into being a, a real adult, and it's going to help you. Mm-hmm. And it helped me a lot when I when I sort of made a similar choice, right? Like I don't know, I feel like a lot of my friends and a lot of people I know um, didn't make that choice. You know, and I think they they weren't exposed to opportunities, certain opportunities that I was. Yeah. Because I did. I, don't know. I had just sort of like after college, because college was so busy and then I did my master so fast. Like that was so busy. Like by the time I reached adulthood, I always had so many jobs at once. You know what I mean? Like this was a carefully formatted plan to make sure that I always had my rent covered and my expenses covered. But even then you're talking about, I had a wiggle room of a hundred to $200 depending on tips, like literally like bartending or go-go dancing. Like you might have some extra money, but not a lot. Like that's my expendable income for the month. Like the quicker you learn how to budget your money and your time, the better. Like if you are living with someone who's supporting you financially, like there's so many reasons why people would do that. Please know that I'm not talking to you like people that have sick parents or they're just doing it because it's like a little easier. Like I'm not talking down on anybody that lives with their parents, but I am saying if you want that to be an easier transition, if you have the choice to move out or something like that, not the people that don't have choices, that's live your life. You're fine. You're fine. But learning how to budget your own money so that like when you do live on your own, you are taking into account like... I can't buy all the food that's in my mom's refrigerator. I can't like drive my car because I'm using my mom, maybe my mom's car, my mom's credit card to pay for gas or car insurance or health insurance. Like get another job or like start saving your money to give yourself a, a bubble of income or saved money so that you can pay for your expenses in the future. You know what I mean? Like it's not, I wish it was as easy as, well, I'll move out someday when I have enough money because I feel like I know so many people like that. And that's an easy rational rationalization for people who, who want to stay at home, right? Like that's what they are telling themselves. I'll fly to the moon when I have enough money. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just not it's a, the answer. It's a two way thing though. I mean, it, it, certain situations enable that option, right? Absolutely. Like the parents, the whole, the whole situation can make that a possibility, which may seem convenient at the time, but I definitely think that after a certain point, it is detrimental. I agree. Well, because it it becomes comfortable and that I can't tell you how many people my age that I knew however many years ago that were like, I'm just going to move home for a few years and save money and then I'm going to buy a condo. Like if I had a dollar for every time I heard one of my friends say that, it's like insane. None of them ever actually accomplish that because what happens when you're not correctly budgeting the money that you do have. You're not saving money. It, yeah, because I'm like, how's living at home going? You saving a bunch of money or or what's going on? And it just turns into 
yeah, but then, you know, you just sort of lose track of where your money's going and they haven't saved anything really since being there, you know, and those are full adults. Those are like 24, 25, 26, 27 year olds that make that decision and still don't execute it as well as they'd like to. So for an 18 or 19 year old, like no one's expecting you to be perfect at it, but it's a really good way to like become an adult and stay an adult. You know what I mean? Just just making the move out of your parents' house when it's less than convenient or it's a little bit difficult yeah. will help you right. the most. And also, you'll I think you'll have a lot of opportunities where you could call your parents and be like, I need some help. Like, I need some money. F- listen, okay? I'm not suggesting this now because I think it's a little bit different. But when I was younger, I would literally every single Monday, I would scrub Craigslist. I would scrub Models, Model Mayhem or whatever that was. Like, I would scrub any website where I could go literally just do freelance work for a couple of hours that week and earn an extra 20, 60, 80, hundred dollars. And that's the difference between you calling someone because you're short on your phone bill and not, you know what I mean? Like if there's an opportunity in your neighborhood or you could pet sit or you could babysit or, you know, there's a lot of things that you could do with your time to earn that little extra money to where you wouldn't have to call someone to help you. You know what I mean? Totally. So that you also don't get evicted or like fall behind on your payments or whatever it is you got going on. Because yeah. don't do that either. Yeah. But you have to make ends meet. Yeah. And you guys are smart as fuck, man. You're, you're really smart, all of you guys. So use that to your advantage. Get crafty with it, you know? Yeah. Don't feel like you have to do things a certain way because other people do them that way. All right. That's um, what I would do though. I'm like, I'm literally going to be $80 short. I better find somebody that needs a fucking cat sitter and they need them now. <laughs> I babysat. I, I, when I was in college, um, I worked the fi- – I had something called work study, which is like a you know student aid, uh, student – what is it called? Fucking – it's like part of your scholarship. It's like a work mm-hmm. program within the, whatever. Um, finance, it was part of financial aid. And so I had a couple jobs. One of them was just like working the fitness center. Which was such a joke because like student fitness centers, especially like ours was really shitty yeah, at the time. Yeah, you're like sign into the gym yeah, you're and like, then you just you're, sit there. Yeah, you're just like on your computer, sign in. <laughs> you don't have to deal with anything. There's never, you know, um, it's a lot different now. I actually visited a couple years ago and it's like totally fucking different. But I worked that job. I worked um, in the athletic department. I worked. That's um, all when you're in college though. When you're in college, no, it's a little different. No, I know. I'm just saying like. These are jobs like while I'm in college, it is different. It is because it's a lot more easy and contained or whatever and available. But I would pick up weekend shifts all the time because they paid like time and a half because people didn't want, you know, want to. That is the a loophole. Okay. Yeah. But I, I did that to make extra money. Like you said, like it's, you have to find ways. No, to I was it. saying that, that students would get paid time and a half on the weekend. I feel like it's a little bit of a loophole. Well, because no one wanted to work on the weekend, especially like the nights. I didn't go to parties, so I was like, get me at the fitness center, beach." <laughs> All right. Um, you want to pick the next one? I don't know. We did the first two. Grief? Just give me one. Grief or going through hard times by M- Maddie. That's not a question. Advice oh, on Oh, advice. It. Yeah. We can – I mean, we don't have to – uh, well, for me, anytime I'm going through something, it's really difficult to remember, but that it is temporary, that it will get fixed, you know, not fixed, but like the way that you're feeling is incredibly heavy and that heaviness will get better. And I know in that moment, it's like, I can't, I can't wait for it to get better. Like it feels awful now. You know what I mean? trying the best to make sure that you are okay. Like it's okay to sit with your sadness and your feelings and everything that is going on, but that you do your best to make sure you are okay. And if you are not okay, that you need to get help to get okay, but that it will also pass or get better in some way, that it is a temporary state, the actual state of grief. It's perfect. Can't even top that. It's It's hard to be cognizant of that though when you're hysterical, you know? Of course, but and and like that's not to say you shouldn't go through mourning and go through sadness and crying and all the emotions because that's part of it. But when you get to the point where you're questioning, you know, like why is this so hard? Like, will it stop? Like, I hate this. Like, you know what I mean? Just know that time does help, mm-hmm. and that, like you said, that's one thing that right now in the moment it's the hardest thing to comprehend. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there was one in here I wanted to hit. 
Um, how to... Oh, do, do, do. Okay, uh, Clark After Dark. Do you want to read this one? It says, advice on how to seamlessly... Into Julian, read it, please. Finish. Come how on. to seamlessly integrate that sponsor spot? And right now, guys, check out MeUndies because they have the softest underwear and they sponsor the podcast. You can get twenty percent off your first pair Julian, when you go to MeUndies dot com slash Jenna. I swear to Julian. God, they have three times softer than cotton, made of micromodal, sustainably sourced fabric. New designs each month shipped right to your door. You can have a subscription where you have cool underwear showing up at your house. Because who needs cool people at your house? Just get cool underwear at your house. Guys, I talk about it all the time. And I, I don't only talk about it. I wear about it. I'm wearing MeUndies right now. Every single day, I wear MeUndies. <laughs> Every single day, I wear MeUndies, guys. Every single day. And they actually just released a super soft uh, pants. They're like lounge pants. They're great for uh, leisuring, as you guys, some of you guys like to leisuring. do. Leisuring. So I would check out their collection. You will be blown away the first time you try some underwear from MeUndies. Just go to MeUndies. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Get 20% off your first pair. And uh, I'm mad at you. Just be the, just be the shit with your MeUndies. I'm and not guys, reading any more questions. You also should be in the know with all of <laughs> what's happening in the world with The Skim. Guys, The Skim is a daily newsletter that comes into your email inbox in a really nice, concise well put together fashion so that you can know what's going on in the world without any of the nonsense that surrounds information online nowadays. Okay. You can know the top stories. You can know what people are talking about, what people are memeing. Okay. So you have the base information that you'll need for that day and you do with it as you choose, right? You can be ahead of the curve at the water cooler. Okay. You can be the quickest memer on Twitter. Okay. Wow, I just sounded like a goddamn grandfather. Uh, <laughs> the skim is a really great way to get your information in a no-nonsense fashion, okay? Ow, God. <laughs> um, right now, go to the skim. That's T-H-E-S-K-I-M-M. That's two M's. Dot com slash Jetta Julian. Enter your email and click subscribe. That is it. You're going to get an email the next morning, and you're going to see what I mean. It is great. You also get a chance to enter for a $250 Visa gift card when you sign up and subscribe to the skim get your foot out of my face that's disgusting uh stop it get some help guys reading the news like an old guy like me is time consuming okay hop on the skim and get in the know now okay i want you to get out cut <laughs> i'm not reading any more questions i don't trust you you violated my trust how to fold a fitted sheet okay so the first Ugh. step Julian! First step, you're going to take You're your... not even going to address that you just completely betrayed my trust I and have me. Yes, you did. I bamboozled you. You helped me with the sponsor, babe. Thank you. I don't want to be boozled. You got boozled. Um, folding a fitted sheet. So you're going to take it like this. No, don't listen to gonna... him. No. And you're going to reach out really Stop. wide. No. And when you look up to the sky with arms wide open, we'll start playing by Creed in the background. Really loud. And it's going to start raining in your bedroom. And once the sheet gets wet, you just <laughs> fold it really fast, and then it's perfect. And then you wake up, and uh, don't do that drug again. Oh, my God. How to not procrastinate. Just figure it out later. <laughs> it's funny. It's a procrastination Doo -doo. joke. Uh, okay. Um, serious answer to this. If you're in a really procrastinating mood, whether it's for homework, work, work, shit around the house, uh, cleaning, organizing, getting your car cleaned, getting your toe cleaned or looked at. <laughs> There's something wrong with my toe. I don't. Mm. We're having fun. <laughs> don't, don't, don't caress my thigh. Um, uh, I, something that works for me is anytime you enter a new room in the house. Why are you breathing like that? Is, are you mocking me? Are you mocking my breath pattern? Don't do that. Please don't do that. Make sure every single time you enter and exit a room, one thing gets done in that room. Even if it's the tiniest thing. Like you pick up a piece of trash and throw it out. Or if you walk into your 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 room where you do desk or your desk where you do homework. Or... Really? Would you like to hear the Virgo version of that? Every time you walk into a room, it looks 
perfect. And every time you walk out of a room, you make sure you leave it the same way no, you found an, it. That's an insane way to No, watch. it that's, isn't. That is just not realistic, guys. <sighs> that, that's, not pro- that's not procrastination, though. Just I feel skip like a couple minutes. The way, She's going to go on. <laughs> the way... <laughs> the way... <laughs> Um, (laughs) for procrastination for me I feel like the only thing that helps is a reward system Mm. like I only work on rewards so like you're a dog yeah cause like it's just not it always gets done but like I'm not gonna do it unless I have something to look forward to by doing it that's good that's good so like when I was younger and I like I took piano for a lot of years and every time that I played one correctly I would get a magical friend right I had three little you know, shit figurines on the top of my piano. Oh, every time, figurines. every time I played it perfectly, I would get to move one down, you know, to like the top of the keys, and I'm like, yay! Only two more perfect times <laughs> until I'm done practicing. Sounds sad. It's very sad, but what it does is it teaches you like I get a little reward, even though it wasn't for you know doing well yeah. or something. Yeah. So like for me, a lot of times like. This isn't, this shouldn't be news to you, but like I do procrastinate on Wednesdays when we're making my video, like a lot. Mm-hmm. Cause I can't, there's a lot of reasons why, like just generally busy. It takes a long time, like everything. But sometimes I can't decide which direction I want to go in. So I'm like, you know what? If I figure it out and I, you know, sort of suss stuff out, this is a different conversation, but like, when I'm ready to get going, I could sort of like lollygag and go do my hair for a while and then decide that I'm hungry and I need to eat. <laughs> that all sounds exactly correct. But yeah. if I want to play Hearthstone, I'm not allowed to play Hearthstone at all during the day ever until my video is done, uploaded, everything. Mm, a lot of times, like PUBG, like if I want to play PUBG, obviously I can't sit and play PUBG in the middle of the day on Wednesday. Like... Try not to play video games in the middle of the day unless it's the weekend. But or unless like, we're streaming on a scheduled day, day for or whatever, sure. open but, day. But like, I'm, there, no fun until all of your work is done, basically. That rhymed. Yeah. No fun until all of your work is done. No watching no. a TV show. No. Well, no, I like to I like to change that a little fun as your work goes on. No, that doesn't work for a me. A little. So for me, um, kind of recently when I would go, th- so the last minute trips, um, I edit those episodes. And when we come back, we're fucking exhausted. And I have like that week, Monday through Friday, or sometimes Tuesday through Friday, depending on when we get back to edit. And I know that Friday we're releasing the episode. Right. Like we've announced it. It's, you have a deadline. There's, there's, yeah. yeah, it's a deadline. Um, but, you know, on the heels of travel and on getting back into your normal routine and all that shit, you're exhausted and you don't want, and you're, you want to chill. Um, so for me, I would go like in the timeline, I would be, okay, when I reach, when I finish editing the intro sequence, okay, I'm going to take an editing break and I'm going to play a couple rounds of PUBG or I'm going to take an editing break. I'm going to go make some food mm-hmm. or I'm going to take an editing break, you know, walk the dogs, go to the gym, whatever. Um, not go to the gym. I'm just kidding. I don't do that for fun. Um, and then it'll be like, okay, once I get to the nine minute timestamp, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just a little bit each time, because that way, every time I go back to it, I feel like, oh, God, I don't feel like that stress of like, oh, my God, I have so much to do. I'd be like, wow, right. I'm glad I pushed myself the last like round. Right. You know, and then it slowly gets done. And then you, then you have a product, you know, it's, it's people who have to write essays or papers or study. I feel like that can work in a similar fashion. Right. Uh, well, for me, like when I was in school and I was studying or writing papers, writing papers in particular, like I – was always the type of person that, like, did it in a certain order. Like, I wouldn't just sit down and start just fucking diary shit onto the paper. Like, I need to finish a thought before I can be done for the night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would always watch my friends be like, I'm done. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, you didn't, like, you didn't finish the, the you know, what your hypothesis is or, like, this first argument. Like, you can't you can't just leave halfway through there because you're going to forget what you're doing. You're going to be in a different headspace next time you come back. Like, editing is a lot like writing a paper where, like, for me, I cannot take a break until the thought that I'm making is finished. Do you know what I mean? 100%. It translates differently to each thing, but it, that concept is universal for yeah. sure. For sure. Like, if I, if I found a song that I like and I want it for one specific sequence... I'm not done 
I'm not getting up off the chair until, until that find, sequence yeah, is finished. Exactly. Because like, I can't like stop halfway through and be like, yeah, I'll figure the rest of it. No, no, no you no, like no, no. you have a thought and a, a vision and you get you the momentum and you have to get it yeah. done. Yeah. So like if you're studying, like I don't know how people would get up in the middle of a chapter and be like, I'm going to go have a margarita. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to sure. finish that chapter. What are you doing? Oh, I want a margarita so bad. Dude. Okay, we can make you a margarita. You're grown. Whip. But yeah, anyways, procrastination, The really the best thing that helps me is that knowing or giving myself like a small reward. Hold on, I'm really up to see. Bless you. <laughs> Don't do that. Boy, giving myself a small reward after finishing whatever it is I need to do. Small reward? Treat yourself like a dog? But it's not always even Never like, gonna it's go not wrong. Always like a good reward. <laughs> Sometimes it's like I'm going to lay on the kitchen floor and hug marbles for five minutes. <laughs> That's my reward. Advice on uh, Ben Volio says advice on doing coffee enemas. Okay, you know, no. Well, it doesn't seem right. Butt chugging is maybe, an art form. Maybe it and... is right, but you cannot convince me to to shove coffee up my butt. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. Oh no, they're just asking for advice on how on that on how to do it. No, that says on doing. Um, potato, potato. I say go for it. Comma, son. I mean, it's your body. You do whatever you want. But I don't have any advice for you. Okay. Sorry. Um, this was this was one that sort of stuck out to me. Uh, Anna asks, advice on feeling like you're useless. I feel like I lost my motivation to do things that I like. I've been better lately, but it's always in the back of my mind. Also, advice on living on your own and helpful tips for adulting. So the first part of that is something I think is important because I think a lot of people go through that where you lose motivation um, and you start to doubt yourself and you go through phases of sadness and questioning what you're doing. Yeah, well, I feel like all those emotions are linked to each other, but they're not the same thing and they're not necessarily because of each other. True, true. I think that was like a, yeah, that was a packed question for sure. Yeah, it is a loaded question. I think one thing that, uh, one thing that helps me when I feel like... I don't, you know, I feel like I'm not creative or I'm like doubting my ideas or stuff like that. I like to remember, and you can seek proof of this, like by going on YouTube or going wherever you would admire certain people and watching videos of them opening up or seeing accounts of them being honest about how they go through the same thing. And just knowing that other people, even people that you might look up to also go through a similar thing. Because that for me is like, it humanizes the experience of being a creative person. Because when you see really creative people who do really great things, you think to yourself, oh, they're just like incredible. And they just nonstop can go through life and conquer it and create awesome shit. But they go through all the same shit. They just deal with it how they deal with it. But just know that everyone, is that, am I like, yeah. everyone goes through that self-doubt. It's like a thing that doesn't escape anyone it just treat you know everyone kind of deals with it differently well yeah no i mean i think all of that is right obviously but in terms of just if you had the without the i'm having trouble with motivation which i think is sometimes a different thing i don't know how directly linked it is to you feeling useless but sometimes in the past when i felt useless the best way to deal with that in and of itself is to just go do something useful, help someone else. Like if I'm feeling useless and you go go volunteer for an afternoon, you'd be amazed how surprisingly useful you feel, how helpful and full you feel as a person to just put yourself out there in a way that gives you some purpose, honestly. Like this is so beyond me and doesn't even matter. And like, I feel great for doing it. I feel great for showing up. And there's a lot of people that could use my help or that need help a lot more than me. And you know what? I feel really happy and lucky to be able to do it. Just basic stuff when you wake up with actual like gratitude in your body that you have like clean air to breathe and like clean water to drink and food to eat or maybe an abled body or maybe you don't have any of those like be thankful for the things that you do have and if you start out your day with that type of attitude if you're <clears throat> feeling useless only in that sense go see if your neighbor needs you to shovel their driveway or take their garbage <clears throat> in like offer yourself <laughs> in some way and it, that feeling does fade away when you realize that there are people out there that actually need help and I'm a useful person but the lack of motivation is is if it's 
if that's linked to you feeling useless, so you're like, I'm not good at anything and I suck at everything, so I don't really want to do anything, that, again, it, it stems from you just going out there and realizing that you don't have to be good in order to do stuff. You don't have to be the best at anything ever, like literally ever. You just have to do, you know, <laughs> like that's it. That's all there is to life, basically. Wake up and just do what you can. And then that's about it. If you want to wake up and, and do very little, that's fine. Like, just <clears throat> do the best that you can <laughs> in any day and given your current state. But, like, the motivation will come as you're feeling better about what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that. Like, because it's not always based on your ability. Because, like, think of all the people in the world that really want to get in shape, right? And those first few times are so fucking frustrating for people because it's hard and it physically hurts and it's really frustrating to do things that your body's telling you that you can't do you know it's yeah. very easy to get stuck in that mindset of like i can't do this i just can't you know and what do you do you just wake up and you just do just go back you know what i mean just keep trying that's all there is so i mean i, I don't know your specific situation but Hopefully some of that helped in some sense. If you're just feeling useless, just go make yourself useful. And I think you'd be surprised how much better you feel. And and if it's tied to your motivation, just wake up and do the best that you can. And your motivation will come back as you're attaching purpose to other things other than just your ability at something. That's good. You know? Just put things into perspective, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, NYC girl Lauren, Lauren Hawkins, Hawkins says veganism for broke dummies. Ooh, it's called rice and beans. <laughs> I honestly, well, you know, when I was in college and I was like, you know, being really frugal, I wasn't vegan. So bags I, of quinoa. I, I can only, I can only kind of give you thoughts on what I think, but Jenna really went through that. So mm -hmm. I, th I think like when you buy in bulk, that's obviously a great start. Like rice, beans vegetables like giant bags of frozen vegetables get get the grains in bulk and like that's a key great start because like <laughs> yeah and well, potatoes and stuff like that and just, when you know. i when i was a broke vegan like the first time my first like go around at it my like groceries for the, uh, first of all i wasn't eating probably enough calories at the time but my groceries include like you know a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter which i wouldn't have to buy every week or every two weeks or whatever and i would buy salad stuff to make a lunch with beans and uh, you know olive oil like nice fats in there like I'm getting a bunch of different uh, fruits and vegetables, not a lot of carbs except from the beans and the bread for breakfast or coffee, peanut butter toast. And then for dinner, sometimes it was like rice or beans or more vegetables. Like it was an okay diet. It wasn't enough calories, but I was certainly was not cooking. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like you can be a broke vegan and eat vegan food, but you're not doing like a ton of vegan cooking, you know? Yeah, like that. all the stuff that we make at this point with like, you're making cashew crema, like that is like so expensive. When None of that is, <laughs> is vegan budget shit, but like- That is not a vegan budget, but there are products that you could buy, hopefully, and where you live. If not, they are available online, but I totally understand what you're saying. And like, I have a budget and yeah. I don't, I can't buy a bag of fucking cashews. That's insane to but me. But like you can get, you know, if you do, if you are more into like cooking dinner, you can get cheap seasoning, cheap mm -hmm. sauces, and then, you know, cook yourself some rice and beans or variants of that with different vegetables or proteins or whatever. Yeah. The basis though can, doesn't have to be expensive. Your produce yeah. and your carbs can be simple and not expensive, especially the beans and rice. If you're willing to like soak them yourself, incredibly cheap. Yeah, you could feed you get yourself. Them dry. Yeah, you get the beans dry. You can yeah. feed yourself incredibly cheap. Is that practical for someone that's like maybe in school or, or working works? A bunch, yeah, I don't know, but you can save yeah. more money. Not that a can of beans is really gonna stretch your budget either. But mm -hmm. in addition. Uh, there are channels on YouTube who do specific videos for cheap Broke vegan vegans. <laughs> options. And like – I ain't got no money, I, but I'm hungry and I want to eat animals. And what I, do I do? I've only found these videos because I was just like watching one video and then it recommended another and then another. I don't even remember names of the channels, but there's so many fucking great U uh, YouTube yeah. videos out there for advice on how to just feed yourself with on a budget yeah. being vegan. 
So more than we could tell you. It's totally possible and it's totally doable. Even if you're in bumfuck nowhere and there's not a Whole Foods within an earshot. Yes. And you think you can't be vegan. I've like literally been blown away when we go to those small towns. Yes. We meet people and they're like, I'm vegan. And I'm like, fuck yeah. You yeah. have it way harder than I do. Yeah. And you do it. Like, and a lot you. of it is just figuring out how to make stuff for yourself. And you don't have to make them expensively with expensive ingredients. Yes, like, true. Also can... Taco Bell, baby. Vegan options over there. <laughs> not even joking. Absolutely. Look it up. Yeah, and you also don't need all of the meat and cheese substitutes. You can do a lot of that on your own with just some time. But it's uh, it just takes effort like any other diet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It takes effort. Whip. <laughs> Stop. Well, um, I think that was a su sufficient advice cast. Uh, hopefully you guys got something so. out of this. And if you didn't, just make sure you subscribe because you might next time. That was pretty good. That probably okay. got us a couple subs right there. I'm going to remember Subscribe, that one. Subscribe because you might next time. Oh, yeah, if you didn't get boy. something out of it now, you never know when you will. Oh, Especially if you don't subscribe. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us for another week. We will see you guys next week for another episode of the Jenna Julian podcast. You guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you on Twitch. Bye. Bye.